I'm playing with Velcro fake Velcro cable ties which were lying on my mixer for reasons which will be made abundantly clear shortly thereafter. Um hello to Riaka Music, hello to Mike Tango Charlie, good evening, good evening to one and all wherever you may be. <sighs> I've been having a week. I really have. Um, it's just been mad. We will get into such things as as the show progresses. But you will notice there's no longer a stand there. There is no longer a camera there. Uh, the camera has been moved. So the Zoom Q8 is now over there. Hello. I've moved things round because I've been tearing what little hair left that I have out in knots over my audio interface problem. So tried, as Array of Emotions knows all too well, I've tried everything to try and get my native instruments, Complete Audio 6 Mark II, uh, audio interface to work without going horribly bit crushed at random intervals and i installed a piece of software called latency monitor which basically took one look at my rig and went oh dear oh you don't want to be doing that so much unplugging and moving around of materials and devices ensued your interface is a little punk says Riaco music it really is I, I had high hopes with it I think it was an omen that the um the week that I installed it and did the unboxing video was the week after I'd completely crashed and burned in here because my previous interview, the Scarlet 2i2, which I have tried reinstalling to see if it worked better than my current interface does, doesn't. It crashed Ableton so decisively that Ableton just disappeared completely. Yeah, I, um, I've just been... I th it, uh, one thing it said was maybe you should cut down on the number of USB connections that you've got. So I have a number of hubs as well as an, an additional USB 3 interface card in the machine. So I pulled one of the hubs off, put the one item of equipment that was in that hub in the other hub and fired it up. And the other hub went, oh, it's too much can't do this so um yeah i now have just three webcams for my live streaming hello studio cam tripod cam and uh hello main cam so the the other camera has gone um i've retired it in the in the uh the forlorn hope that it would stop this complete audio six interface card just going when it plays sounds no it's 
still doing it. And last night, um, I because I've, I've I mean this is how far it's how far it's got. I've actually posted on the complete audio um, part of the 90 Native Instruments website. Hello, Array of Emotions. Just three cameras, says Array of Emotions. Lol. It may even go down to two because I, I, I'm just... I want to be slick, but I want to... I want to have a working system, right? So two cameras may be the answer rather than four. But look, there's me. There's me saying, I'm having the same issue. <laughs> and uh, yet yeah, not inspired when the uh, the next response to my post was absolutely return it as soon as possible. I also discovered this weekend that this is not the only thread about this problem on the Native Instruments site. In fact, this one started in, where was it, November yeah, there you go. November the 25th, 2009. And the guy's saying, yeah, this is a problem. How long did it take somebody from Native Instruments to respond? Six months. Which is, quite frankly, appalling. And uh, the response made on May the 13th, 2020, was, I'll report back. We are working on it. So, a year later, presumably they're still working on it. They have released several new versions of the driver since the fault was originally reported. The fault still takes place, certainly on my copy of the interface, with version 4.82 of the driver, version 4.86 of the driver, and version 5 of the driver. And last night, it fell over just once too often and i was chatting with riaco music on chat at the time it's like right that's it i've had bloody enough of this so um i went to the native instruments technical support site ran through the technical assistance wizard that i have used several times and by the way and i Part of that wizard points to things in the Native Instruments driver control panel software that ain't there anymore. You might want to look at that. And yeah, submitted a return request. So it's going back. I mean, it was July last year that I got it. So I've had it last less than a year. I was full of great expectations for how brilliant it would be to have six ins and outs and you know the focus right scarlet do i do was seven years old i thought well audio technology's bound to have got better than it was back in 2014 when i bought the two i two but um yeah apparently not so i have consoled myself by ordering one of these i toyed with the idea of going back to a Focusrite Scarlet, but um, saw this web page, and this is a brand new, well, it's not a brand new piece of kit, it was released last summer. The Mark of the Unicorn, or Motu, have released a USB C audio interface, uh, which is interesting because I have a spare. USB-C socket on my computer, so I won't need to add any more hubs or anything else. Four in, four out. Um, best in-class audio quality and latency, apparently. So, uh, yes, I, I've ordered one of those. However, one has, one to, has remember to remember the curse of the Edge of and, um, yeah, curse in question this time has taken the shape, believe it or not. I mean, you just couldn't make this up. You really couldn't. There was a fire at the AKM factory, which makes all the analog digital converter chips for audio interfaces, all the high-end ones anyway, which include the ones in Motu's units. 
And that means that stocks of higher end audio interfaces are not what they could be. Just, just, I mean, just, oh, I, I just do not, do not know where to begin with this. But um, yeah, so Muggins has therefore ordered a new audio interface and it will not arrive until June and has also committed to returning his existing audio interface, which you may have noticed a, a potential problem there. I didn't immediately. It's, um, it's the fact that I could end up not having an audio interface for a couple of weeks in between sending the Native Instruments one back to the factory and getting the Mark of the Unicorn one from my lovely suppliers, Gear for Music, who are up there in York. Hello, Gear for Music. And yes, I do appreciate being one of your VIP members. I really do. I have spent quite a lot of money with Gear for Music in the past 15 years or so. And uh, yeah, I do like supporting a British business where I can. Mike Tangle Charlie says, you'll probably still get your interface before a PlayStation 5. This is true. And as it turns out, because I'm a gearhead, I started looking at the manuals for various pieces of kit I've got in here. This thing which is my Mackie Pro FX version 2 22 channel mixer. It's got a USB-A plug on the back of it. And uh, I was just sort of unplugging things. So I went, oh, wonder what that does. I've never plugged it in. Turns out this is a two in, two out USB audio interface. Problem solved for filling in a potential gap. Mike Tango Charlie says, you, RTFM, question mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. I actually, I am like, right, Chief Engineer Montgomery Scott. You know, the idea of being at home is an opportunity to catch up on my technical journals. And I do read the RTFMs. I mean, I'll show you how bad it is. Not only do I have a directory of manuals on my system, right? I actually have a quick access pin on Windows Explorer that opens them all. So there you go. And if we go to Mackie Operator's Manual, there we go. And we'll bring that over there. So it's, it's going to have limited functionality, but there you go. It's got USB out. It's it, I can get stuff in and out of my computer without relying on the um, complete audio six. So that's kind of the plan. And not only am I rather taken, it has to be said, with the um, with the mark of the unicorns rather spiffy interface right one of the things that this has that none of the other audio interfaces has is that it has some um, a built-in loop back for the driver for the audio driver for windows and what that means is that the um the funky cables and plugging everything into my Zoom Q8 that I've been doing for the last year, I'm running the Q8 as the sound driver into OBS, can get rid of because all I need to do is I will just tell OBS that I want my audio input to be the loopback from the, uh, the M4. So that's that's the plan anyway but i will be continuously stressed until i have got all of this sorted out and figured out because at the moment i am quite frankly rather fragile and it does not take much for me to turn into a gibbering wreck and yeah so all and uh, 
Right. So the other thing that happened since last time, right? Well, the other other thing that's happened because a number of things have happened. I like I did say that I have been having a week, right? So the next thing, the next thing that happened was said, right, I'm going to be doing some new music for you. So I sat down in here and fired up Ableton to do a new piece of music. And as you know, I have a set template in Ableton that has things like the Waves Audio SSL E4000 channel strip on my submixes. Ableton goes, no, no, you haven't got that. Can't find them. Not there. I mean, what, what do you mean they're not there? So I go into Ableton, click on my little Waves plugins directory folder to find all that was there are the freebies that Waves give away, like Studio Rack, which is basically a container for putting signal chains of other Waves plugins. What one has to buy into the the rack thing all my other things bass rider vocal rider mondo mod the lot gone poof just wtf i was not happy sent off um a very panicked support request and followed the various fault finding procedures that waves have on their site and um, noticed on the waves central plugin that wave central had decided that the solid state c drive that i have and have used since i got this machine i had somehow replaced with its identical version but wave central goes well it's not this C drive, so you're not allowed to use your plugins on this C drive. You've got to use your other C drive, which is disconnected. It's like it's not disconnected. I only have one C drive, and it's a solid state drive that I've had since I bought this machine in 2019. What the actual F are you playing at? Long story short, by Saturday morning. I'd managed to recover all of my Waves audio plugins, but that did not put me in a good frame of mind, to put it mildly. Okay, deep breath. Actually put together a track in Ableton, and it kind of ended up being a sort of commentary on what I'd gone through over the last couple of days. So this is it's called disruptor right so let's let's lighten the mood after 20 minutes of me basically whinging and um i'll i'll play you this so this is called disruptor i'm not found did i cross the Thank you. 
Did you like that? I thought that was rather splendid. I enjoyed making that. That's called Disruptor, which was kind of um, an account of my trials and tribulations with my audio interface, which, as I'm sure you noticed, crapped out when the uh, the second synth line, which is... Oh, I've forgotten which one it was now. It's one of Native Instruments' own software synths. FM8. Yeah, as soon as FM8 kicked in, the interface just went... <laughs> and then got it back together and carried on. But that's kind of not what I need when I'm doing a live stream for people. Native Instruments. So, yeah, I have not been not been and it gets better it well it gets either better or worse right so i was quite proud of the artful gradual descent into distortion at the end basically because i couldn't be asked putting together a proper dramatic end and i quite like the way the drums just sort of went oh have we stopped but I thought, I know what, I can drop Isotope Trash 2 on the Master Bus and just automate Isotope Trash 2 so that it goes from a completely dry mix with no distortion at all to, well, I found about sort of three quarters was, was, was just what I needed to get the impression over that as Riaco Music says, computer says no. And it sounded fine when I played it through, like I have just done. And I selected the appropriate part of the audio and did export to file. And as always, when I'm putting together a track, I use Audacity to convert the WAV file to an mp3 and to trim the beginning and the end because i kind of like the fade in and fade out effects that audacity has or even though there is as you can see here a programmed fade at the end of the track as the distortion kicks in and goes into that wonderful sizzling frying bacon that is great artistically but not so much when your interface does it while you're trying to lay a track down I'm looking at you, Complete Audio 6 Mark II. Thank you very much. So, edited the file in Audacity and got to the end and played the end, expecting to hear all said distortion. And it's like totally pristine. Track just plays the drums and the drums just lose the thread and just stop. And it's like, where's the distortion gone? I'm sure I've got Ozone on the... I'm sure I've got Trash 2 on the master track. Maybe I need to put it the other side of Ozone. So did that. Went back, rendered it again. Opened it up in Audacity. Nope. No distortion whatsoever. At that point, I went, maybe I can't use trash two on a master track maybe i have to do individual iterations of it on the mix buses that i want like the drum send and the bass guitar and the guitar submix so i did that so i now have three versions of trash two running on my system rather than the one which would have saved processing resources after all Still exactly the same sound when I played it through just hitting the play in Ableton. Render it out again. Open it up in Audacity, get to the end, listen to the fade. No distortion whatsoever. At which point I was, shall we say, a little bit flustered. A little bit exercised, perhaps. Um... Yakum is it says you're having so many technical issues. I think the problem is is I've got to the point where I'm I I've got my kit, I know what my kit can do, and I'm now making music where I sit down in here and look at my DAW and go, okay, sunshine, you're doing proper work this week. And it is exposing flaws 
and stuff because I'm pushing the gear, the software, the hardware, the interfaces, the cables, the cameras, the lot, a lot harder than I have ever done before. I mean, hence the fact that this track has got the ridiculous number of vocals in it that it's got. It's got over 10 vocal tracks. However, that was not the issue, okay? Because I went back and I did my thing and trolled Reddit and user interface forums and yada, yada, yada. Turns out it's a known bug. Turns out it's been a known bug since 2017. And the issue, such as it is, turns out to be that I was using in my plugins. You see, I've got two categories of plugins. I've got VSTs and I've got VST3s, which are leading edge and a lot more robust ha! and 64 bit plugins and ostensibly and much vauntedly highly superior to VSTs. Only it turns out that most people who make VSTs will at some point have told their users, don't use the VST3 version, it falls over. It's like, that's really not reassuring. And it turns out that the VST3, the VST3 version of Isotopes Trash 2 um, can't automate. It does not respond to any automation channels in any door and has failed to respond to any automation channels in any door since 2017 when the bug was identified. Good, eh? So solution was that I just removed the VST3 version of Isotopes Trash 2 and went and dusted off my VST folder, and there it is as a VST, dropped that into the master track, removed all the VST3 versions of it, dropped it into the master track, rendered it out. Perfect. Work first time. So, yeah, that's been my few days since the last show how how about you reacker music says i'm going to have to check what i have now look if it works fine but all i would say is if you start encountering plug -in, problems with a plug-in uh first line of defense would be for me and will be from now on for me is to see if i've got a vst2 version of it rather than a vst3 version ditch the vst3 versions just use the vst2 versions so uh, and there's quite a few of my friends on facebook when i excuse me when i posted um a rather sort of peeved post about this yesterday yeah i think it was my friend ingo said yeah I just don't use vst3s and uh yeah dragon dreams as well said yeah same problems same problems so it's not just isotopes trash 2 that does this it is um what appears to be an endemic problem with vst3 plugins you'd kind of think they'd have fixed that by now yeah so long story short is that that piece is all i've managed to do really since since thursday um given the state of the system in here at the moment i'm i'm not gonna try putting together a, a song live on air because quite frankly the curse will strike and when the curse strikes it just doesn't do my blood pressure and my mental health any good at all and um yeah, I, I need to work on my mental health a bit at the moment because um, I'm not having a great time of it. Uh, I had a lovely afternoon on Friday at the local pub. I went and had a pint 
in my local pub for the first and only time I have done so this year with my buddy Paul, who had just retired, and then a couple of other friends um, swung by and said, oh, hello, and they sat down. I had pub tea. I had a burger and chips. It was lush. So it was really, really nice. But got home and then sat down and, and tried doing audio and just had one problem after another all weekend for, you know, audio or USB. So the number of things I have just disconnected in here now that I am no longer running in here, just I, I've just been quite savage, you know, and the so let's go to the studio you can see look the push the push isn't even turned on that's how sort of paranoid i am about dr overdriving my system now it's like um i'm just keeping most stuff turned off unless i really really need it and it, it, it's pants quite frankly yeah i'm just so off my game at the moment i've been all weekend so um, I don't think I will be streaming for particularly long this evening. It's, uh, I mean, what, what do you do? You know, you, you soldier on. And I mean, if the worst comes to the worst, I have got this. And I will just go back to making my music on a 32 track physical hard disk recorder. You know, forget the DAW altogether. I don't know if you can see it on this camera. No, you can't really. Um, but this is a Korg um, hard disk based digital 32 track machine that I've had since the year dot. It's at least 15 years old now, I think. And uh, it's still huge fun and it still works. Um, touch wood, he said. I. I do fire it up on a weekly basis. Mike Tango Charlie says, no worries. Quality, not quantity. Oh, well, thank you, sir. And thank you for, once again for uh, for your purchase on Bandcamp Friday. I had another splendidly successful Bandcamp Friday. And thank you to everybody who uh, who either streamed, downloaded, or in some cases actually bought um my music which is much much appreciated and uh yeah the quantity quality thing i i will just point out that the album that i released last thursday on Bandcamp, which is still available at the at the usual place um has over an hour of music it's an hour and 49 seconds of um, of music which is which is rather um, rather good for me i usually tend to get approaching the hour but i actually managed to break the hour limit and that's not bad considering one of the uh, one of the songs that i wrote on the album which was written at the behest and the challenge of mike tango charlie himself is two seconds long so yeah that didn't really boost the uh, the duration of the album that much but um i tend to tend to organize roundabout for four an hour's worth of music on every album that i release and i'm trying to release about an album every month so um well done to atitlan who immediately spotted that um the the keynote synthesizer in this track is arturia's absolutely wonderful emulation of the vocoder and um i actually nerded out to the point where i record it because the the vocoder lets you either pipe in your voice from an appropriate audio input which i haven't actually bothered configuring yet or it lets you um, load a sample. So I recorded the sample, edited it in Audacity, and then I just have to hit a note on the keyboard and... And it's... I love, absolutely adore the timbre of, 
of the of the vocoder. It just does something to my synapses that just goes, oh yes. And you can play chords. How cool is that? And um, for those curious about such things, um, the original sample, such as it is, um, is kind of in tune. It's this. This is the sample that um, that the Archuria emulators using. Disruptor. So I, I, I sound a bit like Robbie the Robot from Fireball XL5, I think. Disruptor. But I know that because of the magic that is weaved by the Archuria vocoder, it doesn't matter if it's pitchy enough because it's only the formants of my voice that get used the bandwidth or the frequencies that are actually determining the pitch are supplied by the machine. Disruptor. Disruptor. So octaves, that is the secret. Disruptor. 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 <sighs> Atitlan. And I could not agree more. Just says, such a cool sound. Mike Tango Charlie says, oh, I'm going to stamp on the right pedal this time. I am a robot. 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 And um, I, I have a different... So, Disruptor is, is more the, the machine talking back to me. And quick diversion, if you've never heard it, Neil Young did an album in about 1983, which is called Trans, and it absolutely bombed. The critics hated it, but they showed two tracks on the Old Grey Whistle Test that summer of a concert that Neil Young did, performing the album in its entirety. He had Nils Lofgren on guitar and backing vocals and i watched that those tracks from that concert on the old gray whistle test back in 1982 with my betamax video recorder running and was transfixed because all of neil young's vocals for the entire album pretty much are not neil's trademark beautiful melodic harmonic voice it's him bellowing into an audio feed that is then piped through the keyboard player's vocoder. All of Neil Young's vocals on trans are vocoded. And there is a track called Sample and Hold, which is fantastic. Mike Tango Charlie says, lol, Betamax. It's still in the loft. Uh, I've still got some Betamax video cassettes kicking around somewhere. And I know this is a cliche, but it's a cliche because it's king true. The Betamax was vastly technically superior to the VHS video cassette. Apart from anything else, when you rewound a Betamax, it took the tape off the playhead so that you didn't have high velocity magnetic tape wearing away your playhead. So playheads lasted years longer than vhs recorders do uh reacom music says you should dig them out yeah the problem is a my tv downstairs doesn't have well i suppose it's got a um, s video input but um yeah slight technical problem with it is that the rewind function on it doesn't work because i think the rubber belt that enables the rewind has perished so, uh, yeah, it's a bit... I just don't have the heart to get rid of it. And I cherish the idea that someday I'm going to find this mythical electronics repair shop that can go, oh, yeah, we can fix that. And I'll some suddenly have all my, um, all my B 
Betamax tapes of off-air recordings from MTV and the old grey whistle test. I've even got Live Aid on, on the whole of the BBC's Live Aid coverage. I have on about three uh, Betamax L750s. All of Neil Young's vocals on trans are vocoded and it is a stonkingly good album. And I found out a couple of years ago that they have actually released the live concert that the old grey whistle test showed on dvd I've got a copy it's really good so if you're ever around my place i will probably inflict it on you just be warned but so long digression just because mike tango charlie said robot voice so vocoder one way of getting a robot voice not the only way the other way is a rather strange piece of kit and this is one of isotopes vst3 plugins that does actually seem to work which is called vocal synth and um, vocal synth is a kind of weird grab bag of a number of very very old school vocal effects like the talk box you remember that? It was little, basically just a little amplifier with a Perspex tube and a speaker that you stuck the Perspex tube over and then you stuck the other end of the Perspex tube in your mouth and then you played um, Show Me The Way, if you're Peter Frampton, with the aforementioned Perspex tube stuck in your mouth and you're going rah, 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 while you're singing and playing guitar and the voice box or the talk box makes your voice shape the guitar sound that you go. So vocal synth does that. It also does a whole bunch of other things. Um, so there, it, it has a, it says it's a vocoder. It, it will actually take MIDI input and do what Arturia's, glorious emulation of the moog vocoder does uh, but it sounds a bit rubbish really but i did have an audio submix where one of the vocals that i was using i used this preset which mainly is vocoder and compuvox and if i solo that track program termination it, it sounds a bit weird, to put it mildly, but um, it had the effect that, that I was looking for. And I mean, there, are, there are an awful lot of presets. You can even go on, on Isotope's site and get artist program, like, what's his name? Diesel or Computer Magic invented or put together additional presets for the plugin which you can use, which I think is rather, rather splendid. I do like the way Isotope work. Um, I just hope that now they've been absorbed into native instruments that they don't end up being as rubbish at sustaining things as native instruments, frankly, have demonstrated that they are over the past weekend. I'm brave. So, yeah, the Rev Motion says, this was in an episode of The Simpsons. Oh, good Lord. Mike Tango Charlie says, after a while we got tired of seeing more movies available to our local outlet and succumbed to VHS. I actually have, and I don't think very many of them exist, um, pre-recorded Betamax releases of all sorts of weird things, including Kate Bush's The Whole Story, believe it or not. But um, I, I can't remember the last time I watched a VS, VHS cassette. I've still got boxes of the things kicking around in various places. And I actually have a VHS cassette recorder connected to my machine downstairs so that I can digitise old home movies that ended up on VHS cassette. In here, my this machine here has got a Firewire interface card in it and i've got a little 34 kilobyte piece of software that i found online on github that allows me to plug in my digital video camcorder remember those with the little mini dv cassettes 
and you literally plug a firewire cable into my camcorder and the other end into my pc and it just goes yeah got all those downloads them man is that thing fast it's it's a bit different from doing tape to tape with your mate's cassette recorder next to your video cassette recorder and going ready three two one play which yes i used to do that Mike Tango Charlie says the public access TV station that I work for in Melbourne had every video cassette format known to man. Quite frankly, that's when you're doing public access TV, that's what you need. You know, public access TV, you are going to get someone who shows up with eight millimeter cine film. You know, you're going to need to be able to broadcast that through a tele cine unit. And same with ridiculous video formats all our gear was hand-me-downs from commercial stations hey if it works if it still works then it's nice to see old equipment still being put to productive use and uh, yeah totally totally a good thing so the guitar solo in this was first take and normally when i do a first take I'll say, oh look, CPU flag, go away. You should not be you should not be working hard when all I'm doing is live streaming and running Ableton. You should oh and doing protein folding calculations and probably a whole and yeah, we'll um, we'll leave Dropbox. But yeah. Um normally on one of these things I will do a sort of rough guitar because I always hit record, right? Always hit record when you do your first take of any performance because sometimes something weird can happen that you think when you're finished, you know what, it's a bit rough around the edges, but I think I'm going to go with that. And in this particular guitar take, I was using one of, you remember I was saying with the Zoom G6, the multi-fix guitar pedal thing that I bought last month that is brilliant, but the presets are rubbish. I intentionally picked one of the rubbish presets and played through it with a lot of gain on the input side. And uh, if I play you the solo again, it's how the thing died at the end when the gain on the out in, on the input stage sort of dropped below what the uh, the g6 considered appropriate and it just sort of gave up and i just loved it <laughs> get the idea i mean if i if i solo it it's not even particularly tuneful and the secret there is that the effect um is using octafuzz in other words it's a fuzz that's dropped an octave below the note that I was playing on the guitar. So you get that much, much fatter, thicker, lovely, fuzzy sound. But obviously, when I let the guitar string ring at the end of the solo, eventually the octava went, can't decide what note you're playing. Sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm out. Which is why it just goes into that funny sort of squelch at the end. And when I played it back in context, I went from being really annoyed that it had done it to just thinking, that is perfect. Yeah, so now um, the chat is is talking about the... There's always the weird guy at the local community television or radio channel, and 
believe me, that always is the weird guy. And as Riaka Music says, he always mumbles a little and he smells like slightly sour milk or he eats like cabbage sandwiches. And doesn't that paint a picture? Absolutely, yeah. Oh dear, that's that's that image is going to stay with me now. And not in a good way. So... We had an interesting bunch of staff, says Mike Tango Charlie. Right, so yeah, a single single layer of guitars, and no, I didn't record these in a single take. As you can see, there's quite a few separate takes for the guitar on this. But um, yeah, I had fun doing this, and I kind of channeled my frustration with all my equipment woes and trials and tribulations and and made a piece of art out of it and quite frankly that's kind of all you can do when things fall apart make art as uh, somebody or other said and it's in a neil gaiman book illustrated with drawings fine drawings by mr chris riddell and if you do not no, Chris Riddell's work. You need to find out. So Chris Riddell, brilliant artist, does political comment cartoons very much in the style of Charles Gilroy for The Guardian and The Observer. And if you don't know who Gilroy is, go and Google him because, again, he was an absolutely awesome, creative genius who changed the face of political comment in the UK, certainly, probably globally. Um, yeah, Charles Gilroy, was it, I think? But definitely. And I'm not going to Google stuff because I'm a bit paranoid about intellectual property rights and copyright, even though Gilroy passed away a couple of hundred years ago. Somebody is bound to have licensed his work and go, no, you can't show that. So I'm not even going to try. Just Gil Google Gilroy cartoonist and be prepared for a wonderful thing. The thing about political cartoons in the 19th century was they hadn't quite figured out speech bubbles. And it is to me, as somebody who used to draw comics for various people, including Motorhead, the, the way that speech was represented in drawings, in cartoons, and how it changed. They used to have these, they were like lovely, curly, flowing, almost like smoke trails, with words on hanging on them was was how it started and eventually the the trails became sort of balloons with with speech in them and then you got the little tail that told you who was saying them it's fascinating but it took like 50 7500 years for that to evolve yeah absolutely astonishing but um yeah gilroy google him look him up brilliant and uh, yeah after that ridiculous diversion um that's kind of where i'm at so far this evening so i will make it a short one i'll just top and tail it at this point uh thank you for joining me it's nice to see atitlan uh popping up in the chat we've missed you sir so uh thank you for stopping by yeah i'll be back on thursday god knows what state i'll be in but it will be my 52nd week of doing these Thursday night live streams. So if my equipment decides to function coherently, I will might even have more music for you. And, you know, given the amount of stuff that I've unplugged and retired in here, I would hope I'm going to get better performance over the coming week than I have done in recent weeks. Mike Tango Charlie says, I'm on overnights this week, so probably won't see you folk for a few days. Oh, well, I will once again put the Thursday night show up on YouTube. Um, current thinking is that when I've put the show 52 up on YouTube, I will stop editing these shows down 
and putting them on YouTube, either the Sunday night shows or the Thursday night shows, because quite frankly, it takes me half a day to put one of these together and then render it and upload it to YouTube. And given the way YouTube have been over this copyright strike, I still haven't heard whether I've my dispute has been successful or not. Um, I, I, I'm just done with YouTube, quite frankly. Uh, it's much nicer here on Twitch, which is uh, which is where all you guys are as well. And now that I'm made affiliate, my shows, well, actually, even before, because I'm Amazon Prime, uh, my shows are archived on the Twitch site for 60 days. So you can watch any of the stuff from the previous 60 days on Twitch. And, uh, yeah, as Mike Tango Charlie says, you get to talk in Twitch. You do. You do. It's really nice. And um, quite frankly, this is kind of the majority of the social contact that I, I get during the week. Um, it's about the only thing that keeps me sane at the moment. Riaka Music says, I love talking with you all. Watching YouTube, I sometimes forget that, says Mike Tango Charlie. Yeah, it's nice here. And I do like the chat. And it is really nice to to have an audience that I can bounce this stuff off rather than just sitting here in my own little head. Rob Emsif, oh boy, I am always too late. I am supposed, promised to be on time on Thursday. Well, uh, yeah, thank you, thank you for saying hello regardless. Anyway, it's good to see you, mate. Uh, I hope things are well with you in Germany. But... Um, yeah, so I will be back for show number 52, Twitch live stream. An entire year's gone by since I started these damn things. Reaco Music says, and cats. Yeah, yeah, complete different sidetrack. Let's not go there. I will be back here, hopefully, for write another song. Show number, I suppose it'll be number seven, won't it? A week today at 2100 British summertime and it really does feel like summer here now because all right it's chucked it down for the last couple of days but before it went dark I looked out the window which is the other side of the camera from you guys and a swift flew past the window and that is the first swift that I have seen this year and when they fly up and down the streets in the village doing that shrieking call it's like that is the sound of summer for me so i must try and record it this summer but until thursday until 7 30 bst i will bid you a very pleasant evening whatever you're doing in the coming week i hope it is a good week for you uh, mike tango charlie i hope your shifts aren't too tiring do survive uh whatever you're doing please continue to obey social distancing rules please continue to wear a mask and wherever you are whoever you're with please stay well stay safe stay sane and stay wayne and i will see you next time bye <laughs>